Hello there, and it's summertime in the garden. And that's a tank that we're so grateful to have for keeping our water. So these potatoes are now actually starting to flower. So they're doing great. These are all main crop potatoes. Maris, Piper, Desiree, King Edward. And because of a lack of pots, all I've done is I've just used a compost bag with our full put the potatoes in, poke some holes in the bottom of the bag, turn the top over and just keep watering them. So that's our lovely potatoes, very happy with the way they're going. So if I take you a little walk over here, you can see our poppies in amongst the irises which have yet to flower beautiful little bloom this one here and that one too so when we moved in people had dumped all sorts of things in this corner so we gave it a clear out put some fresh compost in and now we've got this lovely little corner so these are chives and that's thyme which is flowering and these are the Swiss chard plants which it looks like the uh, snails have been enjoying judging by the huge holes in them that's rosemary and here's parsley and that's just a beautiful lobelia so we've had so much sun recently and so much rain that the the lawn is going ballistic and it's lovely to see all daisies and buttercups in it. And just passing a few more poppies. And a tayberry and a raspberry plant. And here we go. So the peas are just reaching ever more to the heavens producing more and more flowers and lots and lots of pods some of which are starting to swell and the potatoes which have been so big for so long are starting to turn yellow so this is a sign these are early potatoes which means it's time to harvest them so that's what i'll be doing today removing the top growth putting it into compost and then and earthing the potatoes from the pots. Here we've got the tomatoes and the flour and the runner beans climbing ever upwards. Lovely to have. And over here we have the courgettes that seem to have a life of their own. Just larger and larger and larger and there they are. Those lovely little yellow courgettes and the flowers. The flowers are great in salads and as a tradition in Italy they take the flowers, dip them into a batter and fry them in tempura. Got a couple of new herbs to join our collection. We've got some echinacea. That's the echinacea and that's high sop, all medicinal. And this is sorrel. This is the curry plant. One of my favourites, Basil. And, ah, oh, lovely, this is one of the first marigolds to come out. So I'll be collecting these and using them to make my marigold tea, which is very good for wounding from the past. There's another one about to come out. A couple of lovely poppies in the flower. I was going to put them out, but I love having them in here so much, I think I'll leave them in. And these are the peppers in the flower and they're just starting to form the very first tiny little fruits on the top. There's the mint. Another pepper. These are just some tiny little spinach plants which have just gone to seed as people call it. A lovely thyme in flower. Another poppy. Another of my absolute favourites, the nasturtiums. The Dutch called it Ostinnisikers, 
and the leaves contain an antibiotic natural medicine from the nasturtium oh now these two little plants given to me by my daughter I've got a cucumber and a courgette now these are grown so much they need to go into big pots I'm glad I'm checking that out and sage and over here is oregano a wonderful medicinal and culinary herb and these are some little tiny tomatoes plants which produce tiny salad tomatoes that managed to save and need to be repotted and here are some lovely white poppies this is the bed where we've been growing lettuce which is almost finished as a pepper plant in the back and this is a green courgette and that is growing very nicely indeed it's doing really well and over here we have more parsley we have a lemon balm and this forest of plants are blueberries and the blueberries continue to ripen and to swell and get ever bluer that's such a delight a tomato that's a charred plant that's gone to seed the strawberries have finished producing fruit and now they're producing runners so if I can find you a runner I'm sure I should be able to find you some somewhere right here they are it produces long shoots like this on the end that's a new strawberry plant in the making so what I've got to do is to wait a little bit longer cut it off put it into a pot it will produce roots and there's a new strawberry plant just like that over here there are more beans I see the beginning of the French beans starting to develop just there and this is a runner bean oh no this has fallen down again let's put you back up where you belong it's supposed to be up here that's it so that's a runner bean I'm doing that up, 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 up. and then we've got loads of tomato plants along the back row there and each tomato plant has got a marigold in there as well because they are very good against the aphids and that right at the back is more peppers but you can see there's a marigold in with each of the tomatoes it really does help keep the aphids away in fact there's a hoverfly there they're also very good at keeping the aphids at bay so that's a little tour of the oh yes and then we harvested the spinach plants and we put some new ones in and they are actually they've settled in very nicely they've produced their roots and they're growing well and they will manage to keep going despite the courgette leaves which are just unbelievably large and this is more of the chard and that is the tour of the polytunnel thanks for watching